Here we are in section 23.4. We are going to wrap up our discussion of angles, triangles, and polygons by talking about a few polygons. Triangles are probably the most common type of polygon that you'll see on the test, but you will see an occasional question about squares or rectangles or even parallelograms, and we're going to talk about some of those here. So we're going to start off with some basic rectangle facts and terminology. Pause the video, try to fill in these blanks on your own, come back and join us when you think you've got them all. In number one here, the sum of the measures of the angles in a rectangle is 360 degrees. It is important to note that that is true of all quadrilaterals, all quadrilaterals. In fact, I'm going to write that over here, all quadrilaterals. have 360 degrees in their interior angles. So no matter how I draw a four-sided figure, so let's say I have, uh, I don't know, this figure here. It's obviously a very irregularly shaped quadrilateral, but if I add up the degree measures of all of these marked angles, I will get 360 degrees exactly the same way I do when I add up the angles, the measures of the angles in a rectangle. Each angle in a rectangle has a measure of 90 degrees. That is what's special about a rectangle. That's what makes a rectangle a special quadrilateral is that all of the angle measures are equal and therefore they are 360 degrees divided by four, which equals 90 degrees. The perimeter of a rectangle with length L with W, we can just write 2L plus 2W. Obviously, we could also write that as two times the sum of the length and the width, just factoring out the two there. Uh, these are obviously just two different forms of the perimeter formula or expression. The area of a rectangle with length L with W, of course, is L times W. Occasionally, we do write this as B times H, base times height, where uh, usually the horizontal side there, we'd call our base, this we'd call our height. Uh, obviously, maybe more typical is to call that longer side the length and the shorter side the width. Length times width, base times height, that's the area of a rectangle. In terms of squares, just a couple of things to add here. First of all, do keep in mind that because a square is a rectangle, all the things that we just discussed for rectangles will apply to squares. However, we can simplify a couple of the formulas since in a square, we have equal sides, we'll call them S. S will be the side length of this square. The perimeter of this square can be written a little bit more simply as four times the side length, four S. And the area of this square can be written as S squared, side squared, side times side, side squared. So again, just a little bit of a simplification of the rectangle formulas there. Diagonals in a square. So first of all, what is a diagonal? Let's go ahead and highlight this right here. A diagonal is any segment in a polygon that connects two non-adjacent vertices. So for instance, if I am looking at this hexagon and, and I consider this vertex, well, this vertex here, we'll call it A, has two adjacent vertices at... Let me just go around here, C, D, E, F. So uh, B and F would be the adjacent vertices. They are, those vertices are next to vertex A, but vertices E, D, and C, those would be non-adjacent vertices. And if I draw segments from A to C to D to E, these three segments that I've just drawn, in fact, I'll go over those in green so they stand out, those green segments are the diagonals that I can draw from vertex A. Of course, I can draw diagonals from B or from C or D and so on, but uh, these three green segments I just drew are the diagonals that go from A to all of the non-adjacent vertices, three diagonals there. When we split a square along its diagonal, and keep in mind a square does have two diagonals. We have one that goes there and one that goes there. But if we split a square along one of its diagonals, we will form two 45, 45, 90 triangles, otherwise known as isosceles right triangles. Isosceles right triangles. 
two 45, 45, 90. So again, if I connect points B and D, that's vertex B to the non-adjacent vertex D forming a diagonal, what I will do here, you can see in this diagram, I have split this square up into two 45, 45, 90 triangles. That angle there is 45, that angle there is 45. The diagonal BD does bisect each of these 90 degree angles here. So I get 45 here, 45 here, 45 here, 45 here. And what that means is if I know my side length, it also means that I know the length of that diagonal and vice versa. Uh, we learned this back when we talked about the 45, 45, 90 triangle that our side scheme is X, X, X root two. Here we are just replacing that X with S. Uh, that is the convention we're using here. We're just calling the side length S. So again, S, S, S root two. So what this means is if I know my side length, I can get my diagonal. And if I know my diagonal, I can get my side length. Remember to get from the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which is what the diagonal is. I just divide by root two to get the leg of the triangle, which is also the side of the square. If I have the side of the square, I just very easily multiply by root two to get the length of the diagonal. Again, that's going from the leg of the 45, 45, 90 triangle to the hypotenuse of the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Let's see how we might be tested on this. If you want to pause the video and do example nine on your own, go to it. In example nine, we have the perimeter of square above is 20 root two inches, and we need the length in inches of segment AC, which is not shown. So length AC, so AC indeed is a diagonal. So first thing I'm gonna do, obviously I'm gonna take care of this first phrase and I'm going to write for S because that is the formula for expression for perimeter of a square. And I'm just doing a little sort of translation here. That is, that is for S is 20 root two. I divide by four, divide by four, and I have my side length. My side length is gonna be five root two. Again, I just extracted that by using the perimeter formula and setting that formula equal to the number that was given for the perimeter. So now that I have my side length, five root two, five root two, five root two, five root two, not really necessary to label all of them, but deal with it. Now, what do I do to get a C my diag diagonal? Well, remember, again, I've got a 45, 45, 90, both of these triangles, 45, 45, 90. So to get from the leg of a 45, 45, 90, the leg of a 45, 45, 90 to the hypotenuse, which is the diagonal here, I just multiply by root two. So the diagonal AC is going to be five root two times root two. Remember that five root two times root two is exactly the same as five times root two times root two, and root two times root two is two. That is true of any situation in which you are multiplying two of the same square roots by each other. You just uh, take the number under the square root, root two times root two equals two, and I get 10 for my diagonal. And that is it for example nine. I am going to go over one other thing here that has popped up, and that is the parallelogram. Um, there is one thing that students definitely should know about the parallelogram, but I'm gonna run through just a few of these things. So first of all, remember in parallelograms, opposite sides, they are congruent to each other. Opposite sides are also parallel to each other. So all of those parallel lines cut by a transversal rule will apply here. Namely, what that means is that the two acute angles in opposite vertices of the parallelogram, bottom left, top right, those angles, those acute angles are gonna be equal to each other. And then the top left angle and the bottom right angle are going to be equal to each other. And of course, any of those big angles plus any of those small angles will be 180. The big and small angles are supplementary to each other. And then in terms of area, this is probably the most important point. When you are doing your area of a parallelogram, you've got to understand that just like in a rectangle, your area is going to be your base times your height, but you need to know that your base, yes, your base might be this horizontal side as it would be in you know any triangle or rectangle, but your height is not the slant height. This is the slant height. 
but that is not the segment that is to be used in the area formula. The length or segment that is to be used is the altitude, is the height, which you get from dropping an altitude, a segment, from one of these vertices. You can actually do it from either of these down perpendicularly to the base or in this case to an extension of the base. So again, your height in any parallelogram is going to be that segment that represents the distance between the base and the side that is parallel to the base. So again, you've got your base here. You've got the side that is parallel to your base, the straight line distance between those two lines, the straight segment distance, perpendicular distance between those two lines represents your height. That is it for other polygons and that is it for section 23. As always, review this material often, know it well.